Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm just going to put a song on, and at uh, seven o'clock, Laura and Jenny will come and talk about Revelation 6. So bear with us. In five minutes, we'll be all back. <laughs> Hello. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. everyone. <laughs> we've been busy today, haven't we? Jenny? We have. Yeah. What have we been up to? 
Well, if you've already been on Facebook or you're in a WhatsApp group, you would have seen uh, finest hour of acting. <laughs> we were just making breakfast normally, weren't we? Just trying to cheer you all up a bit <laughs> in <laughs> this difficult time. Yes, in these times of... Um, we were feeling a bit low ourselves actually, wasn't well I was anyway, so it was good to do something fun actually and to remind us about the things that make us smile. So I hope it made you smile anyway and uh, we enjoyed doing it. We did. And there wasn't too many eggs broken in that no, particular. No, no, we were okay, not no. too many. Yeah. Next one might be four candles, four candles, for those who know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yes, four candles. Uh. Right. Um, I'm going to start actually on home with prayer because it's uh, 7 o'clock. I'm going to start for all those affected by the COVID um, virus. Uh, particularly sad today was uh, my friend, if you remember, my friend had a friend who was called um, Pete Hart. And I've been told tonight, unfortunately, he did pass away. So he's um, no longer with us. So I'd like to particularly, I'd like to pray for those families. And I wonder if tonight actually pray for all the families of those who have lost someone. Uh, I know. So Paul lost a friend yesterday, didn't we, that we knew. Um, which was really sad from it as well. So I would like to pray for their families as well, that um, that actually God is with them um, at this time of sadness. So let's just pray for all those that have lost someone at this time. Lord, we think of all those who have lost someone at this time for the COVID virus, and so many. Pray for Pete's family, and Lord, I pray for Paul's friend's family as well, Lord, and for others, Lord Jesus, that... Um, at this moment in time are just uh, so fearful, Lord, of the virus and so sad for all that they've lost. So, Lord, come draw close to those families that are really affected, the friends, all those that know those that have been affected. And for all those 32, 33,000 people who have died, there are families and people grieving. So I pray now for the grief that's affecting this nation at this time. Lord, in that, bring your comfort, your peace, your love, and Lord, beyond uh, understanding, draw close to those. I pray for all those at this moment are in hospital now or are ill at this moment. Pray, Lord Jesus, that you're, you will put your hand on them and draw your healing upon them and raise them up as well, Lord. Be with them, Lord Jesus. Be with the nurses, the doctors, all those that are caring for them. And Lord, bring an end to this virus, this virus that is just sweeping through our nations. Bring an end to it, Lord, we pray. And help us to be mindful of those that are struggling. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this evening we're going to be looking at Revelation 6. But just a brief recap, chapters 1 to 5, um, had a, a, a different sort of side to it. So going six chapters and going forward, have a different sort of message. So thinking about what we've learned so far, chapters one to five are very much about the, our worship and a glimpse of what heaven will be like and its glory. Um, it was It's about reminding us that worship transcends time and space. Uh, it's not about what we get from it, but it's about what we give. It's about the attitude of our heart and that we should always come to God with expectation that he will do something. That's true. And just a few other markers, just to, as we're going through this, I'll remind you, some things you need to, to remind you as long so you can keep them sort of lodged in your brain so you remember what they mean. Remember the number seven, because seven here um, is significant in the scripture, actually means complete, a perfect a number, so it's the completion. Um, as Jenny says, it's a call to worship, there's a call to worship in one to five, and you know, this is a response almost to that, isn't it? Um, and also remember, at the beginning of this scripture will be mentioned the creatures, the, the creatures of God. And, um, and then remember that that actually is to do with characters. If you remember the different, the ox and the lion and the eagle anyway, they represent intellect, faithfulness, majesty, um, that he is king and that he is powerful. So a reminder who God is, the characteristics of God. So I want to just put that in your mind as well to remind you of that. And also, if you remember the last scripture as well, it was very clear God was, sorry, Jesus was in charge. You remember Jesus walking amongst them, and it was like he was in charge. It was a reminder of that. And also, this message is for all people. So keep that in mind as well as we listen to this um, fairly difficult scripture, actually, in some ways to yeah. listen to, isn't it? And to make um, ends meet off. But I'll pass over to Jenny just a minute. 
Yeah, so I'm going to read Revelation 6 uh, from the NIV. It's called The Seals. I watched as the Lamb opened the first of the seven seals. Then I heard one of the four living creatures say in a voice like thunder, Come. I looked, and there before me was a white horse. Its rider held a bow, and he was given a crown, and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. When the lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, Come. Then another horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. When the lamb opened the third seal, I heard the living creature say, Come. I looked and there before me was a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. Then I heard about what sounded like a voice among the four living creatures say, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and mm -hmm. six pounds of barley for a day's wages, and do not damage the oil and the wine. When the lamb opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature say, Come. I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death, and Hades was following close behind him. They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plagues, and by the wild beasts of the earth. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and the testimony they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, How long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? Then each of them was given a white robe, and they were told to wait a little while longer, until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed just as they had been. I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red, and stars in the sky fell to earth as figs dropped from a fig tree when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. Who can withstand it? Mm. Wow. Okay. So there's a lot in there, Laura. And obviously it's it's talking about judgment. It is talking about judgment. Um, it is actually the a... first of three um, judgments that are pointed out in Revelations. And the first one, of course, is the seals. Here we have the seals being opened for the scroll to be opened. Then there'll be the trumpets and the bowls there to come. So it's the first one of that. It's actually about judgment, actually, of course, is about God putting things right, actually, isn't it? And all injustice, putting all injustice right. So sometimes we look at it in such a negative way, but in a way it's just coming and, you know, do, be doing things, correcting things, putting things is it back, to, back in order, if you like. Um, so, and the scroll actually was not opened until the seventh seal is opened, you notice that. So it's a sort of slow progression, isn't there, way through the scripture? Where slowly it's opened, slowly. God God does everything slowly, doesn't he? And to us, but very quick to him, I suspect. There's a wonderful there. So how is it diff this judgment that the uh, book's trying to talk about different for Christians and non-Christians? Well, obviously, um, if you are somebody who believes and knows that Jesus is coming back and you're, you're certain of that and you know that he is the Son of God and you're redeemed by him, um, him coming back is a good thing. For those that do not believe, that reject God and don't want to know him and don't want to be in his kingdom, that would be a terrifying thing. You know, yeah. mighty, mighty God coming towards us would be a frightening thing. Um, so, yeah. How, yeah. Would, how would you feel um, if you were not a Christian and you were reading this or, or you saw this happening? I don't know. It's hard to get your head around, yeah. isn't it? Uh, images that are not part of our culture yeah. or imagination really uh, unless it's um, 
something in American movies. Yeah, and again, they were very used to these kind of images. So these images I yeah. think about here are stuff that they would have understood and seen and, you know, yeah. got and kind of... Um, and, you know, talk of um, Jesus coming back and the kingdom coming would have been normal language yeah. in a way for them because that was what they waited for. They waited for God to come back and, yeah. and redeem them and save them, you know, like he did in Israel where he took them from... Egypt and save them through Pharaoh into the promised land again. This is kind of like this is the God's people were always waiting to be redeemed and then re redeemed through Jesus, aren't we? And, but actually, one day He will come and He will put everything right, every injustice right, and He also, um, you know, um, the the whole of the earth. It says a whole in Romans. It talks about the earth groaning and waiting for all the sons of sons and daughters of God to 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 be in the number, if you like, so that actually then god will come back and creation will be able to be put once again into once again in glory put right everything will be put right yeah so this is wonderful scriptures that sort of remind us that obviously this passage is quite famous in the sense that you know even people without any christian faith you know this is the story of the four horsemen of the apocalypse yeah. which is obviously used in many uh, films and movies the idea you know of this this judgment um yeah, and the scroll opening, the contents of the scroll was all to do with um, reminding us actually how we've got it wrong, but also how God has authority and ultimately God's in charge. You know, yeah. I know that it's, that's the, and I know that's hard for people to get their head around sometimes. They say, if God's in charge, why does he allow this? Why does he allow that? Well, the answer is, he doesn't. He will bring justice. Yeah. He doesn't allow bad things to happen. Well, he does allow them, but he will put them right. It's not like it's just left. God says, actually, you know, everything everything that you see everything that is not right i will redeem i will put it right eventually yeah so let's look at these horses so first we've got the white one um which obviously is indicating that it's a, a conqueror um but that doesn't actually mean jesus in this particular um situation yeah. jesus comes later yeah. in revelation um we we think that this yeah. is um a, like a a world power, you know, from the commentaries we've been reading, an abusive world power. So it's not a good conquering thing, no. uh, but it's something that will have happen. Um, no, I mean, the horse, the horse is actually represent God's judgment on our sin, if you like, and the way we've destroyed the earth, which we have, and destroyed each other, and rebellion. You know, so that it's coming against us, saying actually those things that exist within our world that are, that are like that. Um, again, that God is in charge. God is in charge of all this stuff. Yeah. They are a foretaste, if you like, of the final judgment to come, which we'll read about later. So then we've got our red horse, um, also yeah. that represents sort of war and power and bloodshed. Um, but it's really interesting the way that it, it doesn't say he brings war and bloodshed. What it actually says is he removes our peace. Mm. And that's our gift, you know, to God's gift to man it is peace. And if you take that away... Well, we all start fighting, you know, exactly. because we're not at we're not at peace That's with true. each other, and who we are um, in Christ. Um, but also, it says that the rider was given power, um, so you know he's allowed so much. You know, God is in charge again. You know, he's allowing so much for a reason, for his reasons. Um, but, I mean, we have a choice at the end of the day whether to follow, whether we know God or not, don't know God. And, Love is worth nothing unless you choose it. It's just robotic otherwise, isn't it? And God is continually very patient with us, giving us chance after chance after chance to come to him and say, I love you, or I receive your love, first of all. Do you know, it starts with us receiving God's love. Never mind how you feel about him, but would you receive his love? Because when you receive his love, you learn to love God. It's so often I think we think we should love God more. Actually, receive his love. The Father died for us, you know, um, sorry, on the, through Jesus on the cross, so that we could receive more of him, so we could know more of him. Um, so, actually, it's about his redemption. This is yeah. continually about yeah. his redemption and desiring that we choose him. You know, choose me, he's saying. He's not forcing us to have relationship with him, he's saying, choose me. Choose me. So, our black horse um, is famine. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the scales that he holds up are interesting. So in our commentaries, it says that they um, was 12 times. The prices have risen 12 times and indicating that um, basically wheat, because that was producing the bread, yep. is something that's going to is the thing that's going to we're going to have a famine in. It's going to be the wheat and it's going to be 12 times higher than the normal price. 
Mm. Um, and that'll be a day's wage for a loaf of bread. That's what it sort of indicates, apparently, at that time in that context. That's the sort of message it's giving. Um, and it's really interesting how it's saying, you know, that it's, it's the basics that are going to be the issue and that the, um, where is it, the oil and the wine aren't going to, there's going to be no family in those. So the luxuries are going to be fine, but the basics are not. Yeah, and again, famine and actually is down to our greed, isn't it, actually? When we see famine, I mean, it's, the wheat actually indicates famine. But it's also, you think of those high prices and stuff like that. You know, fa there is enough food to feed everyone, as we know, in the world. But because of our greed because of our greed, um, that doesn't happen again. So it's about um, us again, isn't it? Not doing right by the world, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, we've got our fourth horse. Uh, so the pale horse, its rider named Death and Hades following behind, were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword. So, um, you know, again, this is sounds horrendous, but... God only allows them so much. Again, he's in control. And also by saying it's only a, a quarter of the earth, he's not allowed, it's not complete. You know, destruction is not complete. Judgment is not complete. It's a process. Yeah. And during this process, he's allowing time for revival. Yeah, I mean, once People again, to choose. Yeah, once again, he's given ch people that chance. He's actually saying, believe in me, follow me. You know, and we have that about removing peace. And then we have, Jesus, who is peace, isn't he? Jesus is the bringer of peace. He is the, the one who brings peace. In the, you know, So it's amazing that there's this sort of almost uh, double-headed sword there, uh, removing peace when Jesus brings peace into the situation. And actually, God is so patient with us, isn't he? So patient with us. You know, although this, was, this sounds quite gloomy, actually, it's the joy of Jesus coming. Those of us who believe believe will sense the joy of Jesus coming we know that he's coming again and you know he's coming for us um you know but I can remember you know um, praying for someone once and suddenly feeling myself so sort of almost rise above myself and look down um, and I remember saying to the Lord you know come please come back come back you know because I want to I want revival but I want you want you to come back Lord because you know and uh, I remember looking down and I saw this vision of the particular person I was praying for who didn't know Jesus didn't know God. And I felt the Lord say to me, you want me to come back? And I suddenly realised, actually, I do want you to come back, but I also want them to know you. Um, so his timing, you know, is perfect. He will have the perfect timing when when everyone, I think, that can re will receive Jesus will, you know, will be part of the kingdom. Um, and it's about being patient, isn't it? Yeah. Um, he's going to bring restoration, isn't he? Restoration. Yeah, and that leads us on to our fifth seal, uh, where it talks about, uh, under the altar, the souls of those being slain mm. because of the word of God and the testimony they have maintained. So this is talking about um, Christians who've died for their faith, but also not just those that have, we think of as martyrs, you know, who've been died in a, in a really outrageous way where they've been murdered or whatever for their faith. No. But we're talking about people who've lived. Yeah, It's not about how they've died. It's about people who've stood up in their yeah. life which should be all of us for what we believe. Yeah, and I mean the altar actually, the altar of sacrifice is the altar in the temple it's referring to. And that would have been where the animals were sacrificed in the temple for the sins of the people again. So there's this whole imagery thing going on here. And if you think about it, we're meant to give our life as a living sacrifice, yeah. aren't we? You know, it's not all about dieting, you know, actually. It's about our attitude, isn't it? It's actually being willing to give up. Um, my life for you Lord Jesus but actually what happens when you do when you give up your life for Jesus I don't know about you but I've had the most fantastic ride with him you know it's a much better than they're doing you know I was doing it on my own I was getting it terribly wrong but actually when I hand it over to you we're also frightened to sacrifice but then the things I've seen the stuff that God has used me for you know I think it would never have happened if I hadn't laid my life down for him how amazing our God is, you know, that, that he's like that. I don't know about you, how you feel about that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Where it's, would you be without him? Yeah, and yeah. it's an adventure. That's yeah. how I like to see it. It is, it it's is. It's just an adventure, and life is very boring without that adventure. Yeah. And, and anything can be an adventure. A bus ride, going to the supermarket, because yeah. you don't know who you're going to talk to. Yeah. And you don't know how God is going to use you. So we don't have to think of our daily lives as boring, because nothing is when God's in the centre of your heart. Yeah, exactly. 
And I love the fact that they have a conversation with God. I like I that. Know. And, know. you know, and he says, be patient. Yes. Know, my timing. And that's really cool. And most of us are not very good at being patient, are yeah. we? And I think there's something in here that when we honour God, I love the, the idea of honouring God, you know. When we honour God, he honours us. That's the truth, you know. So in your life, if there's things in your life where you think, I'm going to honour God with my life and how I live it, what you find is he honours us back. It's, it's you know, it's, you, you are blessed through that in ways that you don't realise. And that's standing firm, really standing firm for him is really important isn't it yeah and then the sixth seal um is the earthquake uh where there's just this massive universal disruption and it's a leveling not just physically they've talked about obviously the mountains and things moving but all people are made equal yeah. those kings and those slaves they're all hiding in the caves together um I like that bit. I like that, I like that bit. <laughs> I yeah. like that bit because we are all, we are all equal, we are all equal. Um, in God's yeah. eyes. And they all hid from judgment and from God's face. Um, but as you know, we were sort of saying earlier, if you're not in that relationship with God, it must be very scary. Yeah. Um, you would be hiding. If you don't know yeah. Jesus in those times or now, what would that be like? I know. And if you look actually at the sort of stuff we're seeing at the moment, and we could almost be, we, we are always in the end times. I, I'm not predicting the end times because I think, I think there's far too much um, people going, it means this and it means that. And I think that the imagery is not, it, this is to reassure those that believe that Jesus is coming. And when we see things happening, we can be sure that God is in charge again and that we're okay. Um, but actually, we're always in the end times because you look around our world, you know, rumours of wars and, and famines. And now we have this virus, don't we? A, a hostile world, stuff like that. Now, you know, there's stuff happening that it's really hard to understand. But all I know is my God is in charge, actually. And whatever happens, it's going to be all right, because I've read the end of the book, actually. Do you know? And, and actually, I know it's going to be all right. And I believe my God. So that's what it's kind of about, isn't it? This is a reassurance, actually, for God's people. Yeah, and I think it's really important that we don't try and predict. So yeah. many people have tried to predict what's going to happen, which will yeah. order, what dates. So it's just like... What, what were they referring to here? You know, it's just an imagery for us to know these things, you know, will pass at some point, you know, during those times. But it doesn't have to be... We don't have to... We're not meant to know. Not meant to. You know, and there's a good reason not about that. Yeah. Uh, I think these things just point just to be ready and to trust to just trust, trust god be patient be you know? ready so although this is very doomy gloomy in some ways actually it kind of isn't and i i don't know about you but i feel actually you know people um you look at you know suffering um you know the amount of times it's in times of suffering isn't it that quite often revival happens when god does his greatest works and he redeems people and he draws them out of it um, you know, I don't think God likes us to suffer. I don't think he wants us to suffer. In fact, I'm certain he doesn't. But I do know that he draws alongside us when we do. You know, I'm praying that through this, this virus thing that's happening, what we'll see is a great move of God, that people will come to know God. That it will be a revival like we've never seen across this world because they realise that God does love them and actually there is more to life than perhaps we realise. Um, you know, and we turn to him and that, that will bless us i know you know and bless so many people so it'd be lovely to see that happen and i believe it will I believe god will move greatly mm. even even as we suffer and then our last verse just as an encouragement uh, to ourselves or makes us really think about you know it says who will stand you know in these mm. times i think it's just a reminder for us to stand up you know for what we believe in who will stand well those who are justified by grace through faith in christ yeah. Um, and uh, th that also harks back to, I've got a couple of scriptures here that remind us about standing firm. Uh, first of all, I've got Romans 5, 1 to 2. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace in which we now stand. Mm -hmm. um, then we've got 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. Um, and then lastly, I've got 1 Peter 5, 12. Okay. With the help of Silas, who I regarded as a faithful brother, I have written to you briefly 
encouraging you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Stand fast in it. Yeah. And so it's just those links to remind us to stand, stand firm in all that is happening and all that will happen. Mm. Um, but it's all good. It's all good because remember that we don't stand alone. He stands yeah. there with us through those trials. Be encouraged. Everyone be encouraged yeah. that God is with us. And uh, Revelation is an amazing book of encouragement. And so I just think we have to remember that he's encouraging us to trust him and yeah, stand firm. Let us yeah. pray. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you for this time together, for the technology to be able to do this, for all those listening and all who will. May they, Lord, read your word and may they hear you speaking to them through it. Give us the courage to stand firm, taking hold of the peace and the joy that you give us. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's that was okay. really good. Good to see you all. Um, and uh, look forward to seeing you again soon. Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I will be doing morning prayer with Paul, and we will be talking about character of the Bible. And I'm going to talk about Joshua tomorrow. Um, Joshua is one of my favourite leaders in the Bible because uh, he doesn't get a lot wrong, really. I like Joshua. But he is, uh, there's something very solid about him. I have this wonderful image of a kind of very strong man, anyway. And, <laughs> and uh, yeah, sort of gl gl gladiator type guy. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> I'm just watching. Just getting carried away again. <laughs> he is brilliant. So I just want to um, <laughs> encourage you to come. And I'm just going to talk about Joshua. I would just talk about one aspect of his character and challenge us really to think about how, what it means to be like Joshua. So 9 to 9.15, um, short, short reflection and we have time of prayer. And come with your prayer request tomorrow as well. I know there's things we need to pray for um, and continue to pray for. We'll continue to pray for Tracy's son, Fred, tomorrow as well. And that he continues to get better and, uh, and others that I know about. So, so um, please do come and put up any requests that you'd like us to pray I'm for tomorrow. Thank you for, we've had an answered prayer for Carl and Barry. Oh, answer the prayer for Carl and Vi. Thank you, Anne, for letting us know. That is fantastic. We'll continue to pray for them as well. Um, that's and great. Ross said while you were talking, the song, The Lion and the Lamb, came to her mind. The Lion and the Lamb, yeah. Great song. Good song, too, yeah. Thank you. Any others? Or are we okay? No, okay. that's about it. Brilliant. Well, lovely to know you're there, and uh, we miss you all greatly. I cannot wait until we can all have a massive hug, okay? So see you soon. Bye.